So there's this channel I've discovered recently. Or actually, I shouldn't say I discovered it because I was already subscribed to this guy for probably years. That's kind of what I do. I just subscribe to things I think might be fun later. Half the time, I don't even bother watching any of their videos if I think their channel looks weird enough. I just figure, eh, I'll put them in my subscriptions and maybe someday something they do will catch my eye. So I didn't discover this guy, but something he did caught my eye. To be honest, right this second, I'm not even sure if I'm going to cover the thing that caught my eye because finding that video got me watching more of his channel and I found a bunch of other stuff that I thought was equally mm, depressing and terrible, if not more so. Another thing that caught my eye was this guy has 1.66 million subscribers. At least that many. This was as of the last Social Blade count before he apparently hid his subscription numbers. Now, like I say, a lot of the videos on this channel raise several of my eyebrows, but I'm going to start with the one that made me decide to do a video on this, because I think it's a beautiful visual depiction of the kind of problems that plague this content. Usually this guy likes to do videos about talking to spirits through radio devices, but not this time. This time it's about dowsing rods. I'm not too big on dowsing rods, but I know many people like them. Um, I don't hate them, but the problem I have with these is every time I see a video or someone in person, and I've worked with people who've used them, and they're using the dowsing rods, I always see their hands move, right? You might. Depends on a lot of things, though. How observant you are, the camera angle, how skilled the person is at making them move without making it obvious that they're making them move. And of course, it also doesn't have to be their hands that move. I mean, you're going to point out pretty quick that these are extremely sensitive, right? They rotate really easily, which means that a number of factors can influence it. Body movement, like arm movement, torso movement, leg movement, movement of the environment, wind. I mean, really, there are just too many variables here for it to even make sense to give credence to this. If you actually wanted to establish that these work properly. You wouldn't stand there holding them in your hands. You'd put them in some sort of controlled environment with no ground movement, no air movement, clamp them down, you know, get the handles secured perfectly still in a vice or something, and then leave them alone and see what happens. Talk to the spirits and see if the spirits can move them, but not while you're holding it in your hand. The fact that people who are really into these insist that they have to hold them in their hands, which are inherently unstable, really should clue you in immediately that there's something off about this. And apparently for you, at least at this point in the video, you claim that it does. Which is a good start, you have some basis of skepticism, or at least a recognition of the concept. But if you took that skepticism through to its logical conclusion, I don't think you would have bothered with the rest of this video, so it doesn't really mean that much. So it's always like, you know, can you turn this rod to the left? You always see their hand move a little bit. And these dowsing rods are so sensitive to hand movements. Yet they are sensitive to hand movement, and we're going to see that in this video. That will certainly be a factor in what's going to happen. But reducing it down just to hand movement, as if the motion of the rest of your body has no impact, smacks of trying to get the audience focused on one particular small thing, and essentially to make them miss the forest for the trees. Now, in saying that, I'm not trying to attribute motive. You may be just another one of those people who's stuck thinking about it in terms of pure hand movement and nothing else. Either way, though, the outcome is the same. The audience is now focused focused on one small thing and not the entirety of what's going on. I'm going to try an experiment for you guys and I want you to look at my hands rock solid to make sure I don't move. Yeah, see, there's this big focus on focus on the hands. Frankly, this is the kind of talk that magicians do before they start a magic trick. Now watch my hands very carefully, make sure I'm not up to anything. Again, not necessarily attributing motive here, but there's one part of this video that I find a little troubling. Because maybe if I get these to move on command, I want to make sure that I am not some kind of subconsciously telling my hand to move a little bit. I'm not sure how many people watching are actually very much aware of dowsing rods. Most people know of them as a stick that you walk along with and it tells you where water is, or gold or oil or whatever it happens to be. And in fact, there are some comments under this video about exactly that. Let's take two seconds and detour onto those because these make me want to put my head through my desk. I didn't see your hands move. My dad used cherry tree branches in a Y shape to find water for wells. He was a hundred percent. Hmm, maybe you had a lot of groundwater. I work for a water company and we've used these to find buried water lines. And some people are better than others, but they work. Are you sure? That sounds like they sometimes work at best. I wish I knew what company this was so I knew who to never hire, especially if some people are better than others. What if you get the less magical guy out and he digs up your whole yard looking for your water line? And this one doesn't have anything to do with finding water, but as a child of about six years old, my dad had told me to hold these and walk around our yard, instantly seeing a problem. 
I asked what they were, and they said just a magic trick. They said hold them tight, to which I did. Those sticks went back and forth, inside to side. Yes, they do work for those that will keep their hands still. I think it's easier for spirits to contact us and communicate with us with these. So when you were six years old, your parents gave you a toy and told you to walk around the yard holding them, and that caused them to move because you're walking. And now, as an adult, you still haven't managed to solve the riddle. Oof. You know, I hooked up one of those clappers to our light, and my five-year-old didn't even believe me when I told her that was magic. Honestly, I know a six-year-old is a six-year-old, but even so, I kind of expect better. Anyway, the usual idea about how these dowsing rods work is the idiomotor effect. Basically, exactly what Huff just said he wants to avoid. Subconsciously moving his hands a little bit and influencing the way that the rods move. And he says, well, I'm gonna try really hard not to do it. Which, of course, is gonna make you not do it about as much as saying don't think of an elephant is gonna make you not think of an elephant. But at least he's not getting up with them and walking around. If people's upper bodies stayed still when they walked, it'd be a lot easier to make walk cycles for animation. The idea of walking around with these ultra-sensitive unbalanced things and thinking that you're going to get a reliable result, thinking that any movement you see in them is from the spirits, is probably one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. I'm going to try to focus on spirits, but I also don't want to move my hands. So keep a close eye on my hands. I will too when I play this back, because I don't want to, um, uh, you know, move my hands and make these move. I want to see if spirits can really move these. Great, so we're about to get started on this, but I have to say before we do, one thing I really appreciate is that you have the camera locked down in place. In this video, you took a little detour and played an old video of you on board a ship, and the problem with that, aside from the fact that you're on a ship, which might not necessarily stay perfectly level, was that whoever was operating the camera had it handheld. If your goal was to establish anything, I don't know why you wouldn't have used a tripod. Probably someone who has After Effects, which I don't, could successfully stabilize this and lock down the background so that the only movement that's visible is yours. But yeah, that sure doesn't make it easy, so thank you this time for apparently doing this in your house, for one thing, so on a stable, motionless floor, and with a completely still camera. So I'm gonna give it a try here now. So I don't want to move my hands, so I gotta make sure I don't do that. So spirits, if you're here... And you zoom in on your hands to... I don't know, show that you're not moving your hands? But you already are moving your hands, they're bobbing up and down. And as you say, these things are very sensitive. And so regardless of what happens next, like I say, this is an inherent problem with doing this kind of thing using your hands. I don't care how steady you think your hands are, your hands aren't perfectly steady. And you're holding an object that's very susceptible to starting to move from small movements. So yeah, already off to a bad start just by the nature of what you're doing. But let's give it a chance. Can you bring these rods together so they touch? Spirits, can you move these rods together so they touch? Just to be clear, I will go through this again afterwards to get a closer look at the motion that's happening. So I won't get too far into that yet, but I would be really curious to hear an explanation as to exactly why a spirit, when you ask it to move these that you're holding in your hands, is able to do it. But if, say, you talk to the same spirit and you ask it to move a ball that's sitting on a table, which is at least as easy of a thing to do, if not easier, why it can't do that. Unless you kick the table. What's the reason for that? And if it's something to do with spirits only want to touch things that you're touching, something something spiritual connection, how can I reliably distinguish that from just you're holding the thing in your hands and so you're influencing it? Well, I guess the answer is to do an experiment with proper controls and see if it works the same way once you cut the variables out. But every time that's actually tested, like for example when James Randi was testing people's paranormal abilities, it never worked. I guess then there's some other excuse like, oh, being tested is cutting off my connection to the spirits or something something like that, right? By the way, Mr. Huff here has a tendency to make fairly popular videos talking to dead famous people. A few months ago, he had ones with 11 million, 7.2 million, and 4.6 million views talking to someone named Sushant Singh, who I believe is an Indian actor, who I personally don't know of, but apparently was pretty popular considering the view numbers on these videos. He has some talking to Michael Jackson, Robin Williams, Eddie Van Halen, Charles Manson, and James Randi soon after he died. And that video makes me want to throw up in my mouth, such as it is. I might take a look at that one another time, not sure. Can you go a little faster? Oh my goodness. Thank you. I feel your energy now. Oh, he feels the spirit's energy. Well, I guess now we know for sure there's spirits involved. He says he felt something. All we have to worry about now is whether his hands stay still enough to not overpower those spirits. 
Come on in. Feel. I'm feeling that energy. Oh my god, so am I. Steve, I can't believe it. I've, I've never felt energy like this before. I can feel it filling me up inside. I'm so full of energy. I want to... I want to let it out. I want the whole world to know what's inside me. I... <laughs> Oh. Wow. Thank you, spirits. I've had an experience. Move these. Try to get them to touch, spirits. You're almost there. Can more spirits help out with the energy? That is amazing. Oh my God, when they touched, I just got this jolt of electricity. Yeah, so from the sounds of it, that's what most people would call excitement or like satisfaction, a release of tension. Maybe you're in suspense, right? This feeling in your body like, whoa, it worked. So at this point in the video, I'm thinking, well, okay, I've seen a lot of videos from this guy where he supposedly talks to spirits in the radio. You know, he scans through radio frequencies and takes whatever random words or noises he hears and desperately tries to hear them as something coherent that fits his narrative when usually they're just total garbled nonsense. But I'm thinking, hey, maybe this guy isn't necessarily trying to fool other people. Maybe he's fooling himself as much as he's fooling anyone else. He doesn't realize he's moving his hands, you know, the idiomotor response. He's really, really hoping that he's going to get to see these spirits touch tips, but he genuinely doesn't know if he will. And when it finally happens, he gets a genuine flood of excitement, like, wow, I can't believe I got the spirits to do that. That's amazing. Right, that's what I'm thinking at this point in the video. Unfortunately, by the time we get to the end, I've lost some confidence that that charitable assumption is accurate. Although, to be fair, I still don't know for sure. Once we get there, I'll explain my thoughts on it, and then you guys can make up your own mind. Can you pull them apart now? This is amazing. Thank you, spirits. Can you make them go the other way? Can you pull these rods apart? Open them up. Bring them back to where they were. Can you do that? All right, I know I said I wasn't going to comment on movement too much right now, but for this I'll make an exception. Right there was one of the more severe movements that we've seen so far. I'll zoom in a bit and play it again and slow it down and just take a look at how that left hand, the one on camera right, moves quite a bit towards camera right and sends the tip of the dowsing rod rotating that direction. <laughs> Some people might be thinking, okay, sure, but that's just a little slip up. It's just one time. And yeah, that's true. But of course, for the true believer, most of what makes these dowsing rods supposedly work is a whole bunch of even smaller slip ups a whole lot more times. And if you're not seeing those yet, I will show you them by the end. The left one's going. Can you make the right, my one over here go? Can you do both of them? This is amazing. Because I don't feel that I'm moving my hands. Thank you, spirit. Totally possible. And of course, that's the entire point of why these dowsing rods are set up to be extremely sensitive. If they weren't, it'd be a lot harder for you to make them move without feeling like you're making them move. And I should say, you know, it probably seems like I'm extremely contemptuous of this whole idea through this video. And that's because I am. I mean, there's a reason I've never done videos about this before. This to me is right up there with bird UFOs and out of focus star sky amoebas. In fact, honestly, it might even be worse. To find this convincing, I think it probably takes an even greater lack of critical thought. I mean, to identify the problem with the slightly blurry birds and the out of focus stars, you at least need to know something about how a camera works. You know, the absolute basics. And cameras are modern technology. There's a lot of people who just don't know that much about them. But to fall for this one, you have to be confused about your own hands. I don't think believers in this have as good of an excuse. Am I moving my hands, guys? Do you see me moving? I'm trying to stay rock solid. Yeah, you're moving. You're moving a lot. You have been this whole time. Now imagine trying to keep your hands still while you walk around your yard. And these things, can you move them all the way to the right? Just, just push them as far as you can. As far as you can to the right. Hope they're in focus. And here we are. This is the moment where my charitable assumptions are shaken. I won't say they're destroyed, but they're shaken. It's probably not clear to everybody right away, so let's go through it step by step. And these things, can you move them all the way to the right? Just, just push them as far as you can. 
as far as you can to the right. So he's declared that what he wants is for the rods to rotate all the way to the right. Now what actually happens is not that, but maybe we could take that as him misspeaking. And what he actually means is, can you push them all the way out, right? The one on the right all the way to the right, the one on the left all the way to the left. Because after all, he already had the right one on his mind. He was already trying to get that one specifically to move just a few seconds ago. Here's the clip to refresh your memory. The left one's going, can you make the right, my one over here go? So regardless of whether he wants them both to move to the right or both to move out, he definitely wants that right one to move all the way to the right. But that's a fairly large movement, and all he's accomplished so far, with his very small, difficult to detect hand movements, is small movements. And now my interpretation is this, and I could be wrong, but it looks to me as if he finds an excuse to make a larger movement, to move his entire body which will give some momentum to the rods. Hope they're in focus. He quickly moves his entire body back away from the camera, and sure enough, those rods start to turn quickly. Now, bear in mind, this entire dowsing rod attempt has taken about two minutes at this point, and the focus on the tips of those rods has not changed that entire time. However in focus or out of focus they were at the start is how in focus or out of focus they are now, and for two minutes that hasn't been a problem. But as soon as this large climactic movement is wanted, all of a sudden it's a big issue that they're not in focus. Oh, I sure hope they're in focus. Better jerk my entire body backwards. Watch it again. As far as you can to the right. Hope they're in focus. But remember, watch the hands. If the hands don't move, that's all that matters. I don't know, leave a comment with what you think about this, but to me this absolutely screams that he knows what he's doing. It's possible that I'm being uncharitable, it's possible I've encountered too many fraudsters in my time. Maybe he's just an innocent goofball. But personally, after seeing this, I can't accept that. I'm not necessarily going to assign guilt, but I also can't assume innocence. That's awesome. Thank you spirits, if you did that, thank you so much. Now I felt like I didn't move my hand at all. Um, but was I? I'm gonna look close at the video, you guys look close. Alright, let's do it. Now, this is gonna go by pretty quick, so watch carefully. And yes, of course watch the hands, but also watch the body. And more importantly, which I find is much more effective, watch the handles of the dousing rods. Because those are straight lines that go right down through the center of his hands. If his hands aren't moving, if he's not moving the rods, then those handles should not be moving at all. And that camera is locked down, so any movement that's on the screen is movement in real life. Keep in mind as well, there's a couple spots where he transitions to a close-up. And because I have this sped up, and because we're trying to focus focus on the tips of the rods, and zooming in on them makes them move and just makes it hard to focus on them. I've cut those parts out, so there's a couple very small time jumps. Play it one more time, and again just watch the angle of the handles. Really relative to the camera, they should be staying at 90 degrees. But they're moving around wildly, they're tipping inwards, they're tipping outwards. I mean, it's plain as day. And this is why we don't try to do delicate experiments with our fucking hands. Because if these things really can work for me, it's something I can start implementing here and there, right? And I think, um, you know, the more the spirits get used to them, the faster these will go. Right, again, in Huff's mind, there's no question about whether there are spirits, whether the spirits can move these objects. He doesn't doubt that the spirits can move them without you moving your hands. All he appears to doubt is just whether you can actually keep your hands that still. It's just amazing the backwardsness of that thinking. You know, when I was little, I used to watch people use dowsing to try to find oil or whatever it was, and they always failed, so... You know, I've always been skeptical of dowsing rods, but if I can somehow get the spirits to use them, I think it can be pretty cool. There's gotta be some kind of term for this, right? Where you're skeptical of the smaller claim, but not skeptical of the big one? It just boggles the mind. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here, so please do give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. Enormous thanks, as always, to all of my supporters on every platform who keep the channel going. Hello to the email squad, and thank you all for watching.